welcome to this very special program, an exclusive interview with President Muhammad Buhari. I'm Shonwa Kimbaloye. And I'm Maope Yusuf. President Muhammad Buhari's past and reputation is no secret. And so the... Excuse me, Mr. Sherry. But what I wonder is when Kanu was safely in Europe, abusing this administration and mentioning too many things, I never thought really he wanted to voluntarily come and defend himself on the accusation he has. So we are giving him an opportunity to defend himself in our system, not to be abusing uh, us from Europe, you know, as if he, uh, as if he was not an Nigerian. Let him come here. Uh, in a, with us and then criticize us here uh, and then Nigerians know that I don't interfere with the judiciary let, let, let him be listened to so but for those who are saying that he should be released, no we cannot release him no possibility of a political solution no there is a possibility of a political solution if people behave themselves all well and good but you can go to uh, to a foreign country and keep on uh, sending uh, incorrect uh, economic and security problem against your country uh, and thinking that you will never have to account for, for what you have been doing. Let him account for what he has been doing. Mr. President, as we wind down now, I don't know, I, I think that sometimes you must sit and reflect about when you, you know, you tried many times to be leader of this country and you succeeded on the fourth attempt. And I'm sure that you had your goals for this country when you had, when you ran for office, the many times you offered yourself. Um, when you think and, and look at where Nigeria is and the way forward, do you fear for this country? Do you fear for our oneness and our unity? Thank you. And after settling in, we get right to it. In his New Year Day statement to Nigerians, President Buhari had said security remained on the front burner. And that is precisely where we stopped. Your New Year speech. And in that speech, you told Nigerians, you said, and I quote, the persistent insecurity in certain parts of the country have threatened unravel the incremental gains achieved. Do you envisage the enormity of the task when you promise to tackle insecurity as president and commander in chief of our country? Well, I think you can recall that uh, when I was campaigning in 2015, there were three fundamental issues security, economy, and fighting corruption. And for Nigerians to be fair to this administration, is try and find out from the time we won the election in 2015 to now, in the three promises we made, improving security, improving the economy, and trying to fight corruption. Well, securing the country in the northeast. If you ask anybody from Bongo State, from Yobi State, from Adamao State, there were a number of local governments, about 18, that were in the hands of Boko Haram. None of any local government now in, is strictly in the hands of Boko Haram or Islam. So, in that respect, we have done something. In the economy, don't forget, and I challenge so many people to go and check with the central bank or NHPC, the production from 1999 to 2014 was 2.1 million barrels a day, average production, at the average cost of 100 American dollars per barrel. When we came, somehow, the militants were unleashed in the south-south, production went down to half a million barrels a day. And I think, I think by some fabulous coincidence, 
the price again collapsed to about $37 per barrel. But to look at what we did within the time frame and the resources available to us relative to the government uh, we inherited from. Well, they talked about how the militants were unleashed. Some people were saying that President Erdogan also faced that crisis uh, when he ascended, uh, when he became president, and that was one of the reasons why he had to you know, come up with the amnesty program. But I'll take you back again to security. You've spoken about the progress we've made in the Northeast, and that is true. The camps are being emptied. The Northwest continues to be of concern, where we see bandits. Uh, you know, unleashed in many parts of the Northwest, sometimes getting to the North Central of the country. Would you say that we understand fully the problems we're currently facing in terms of security in the Northwest? You know, the Northwest is the same people, the same culture, stealing each other's animals, killing each other, burning villages. So I think the only language they, uh, they understand we discuss it thoroughly with the law enforcement agencies, the service chiefs, the inspector general of police. It's to go after, uh, you know, the, the terrorists. We label them terrorists, and we are going to deal with them with such. And I believe if you go to those constituencies in the Northwest and North Central, within the last four weeks, there are improvements in the security. It is true, I mean, because the farmers' herders' crisis um, was one that was a big challenge a few years back, and maybe a few months back as well. Uh, it's come down somewhat, but some people are attributing it to the seasons. They think it's about the weather. And that now that we're entering the peak of the dry season, perhaps we could see a resurgence again. Would you say that we have dealt with that problem once and for all, or do you fear that it could rear its head again? We cannot do much about the weather, but about the security, we have taken steps and we are seeing the results and we thank God for that. For the weather, we can only pray and hope that uh, uh, the weather they are mentioning, the climate change and so on. Uh, Nigeria, we are very susceptible to such uh, issues because of our population and the size of the country. Population is the size of the country. I made that reference to weather because, you know, people believe that when things get dry up north, that's when you begin to see the herders coming down south, and that's when we see the resurgence of the conflicts between farmers and herders. So that's why I made reference to the weather. Do you think that that has been sorted once and for all? Yes. Um, the ministers of agriculture from out of Obe, Mahmoud now. Uh, one of the issues I discussed with them personally is to go and get the gazettes of Fast Republic, especially from the northern states. There are cattle roads and grazing grounds. And uh, the uh, cattle areas are confined to those areas. Those that go outside that one are your legacy. Well, I think uh, my legacy is that um, I try to make sure that um, we conducted ourselves with integrity. That means we stopped all the stealings as much as the system can allow. We stopped the appropriation. And for Nigeria, that is very, very important. The expectation from Nigeria, I tell you, is a young population, the expectation is so high that we must make sure that the resources are managed properly and that they understand resources are being managed properly. If they don't, if they don't, if they rebel, there will be trouble, a lot of trouble. And then it was a wrap. Your Excellency, President Muhammad Buhari, many thanks for giving us this opportunity to speak with you. Thank you so much. Thank you for furnishing me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, it was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you so much. We truly wish you. Come and remove your